Welcome back, Zerka fans, to Nail is It Done. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a rather odd match today. It's going to be, well, this, not today specifically, there's several, but this one's going to be a 2v3. Happy Droid, Bilbo, T-Baggins, and Null King versus I Am Not Null and Hydrus. This was a request by I Am Not Null, actually. I think they, I'm not sure if they had the double commander or not. I'm guessing they did. Or, wait, is there a double commander? Nope, apparently not. Okay. I haven't seen a two like an unbalanced team game in a while. I'm, I they used to be I think double commander that was given to one of the players on the two side. Clearly not the case anymore. I guess they just don't bother balancing it out. I think the idea is to balance it out by skill, but I can't remember how that works. Like the idea I think is that like you could have a bunch of bad players in one team, or a bunch of not as good players in one team, and a bunch of really good players in the other. And the team with the really good players is one fewer player. I mean, it's even, I suppose. Anyway, I'm just going for the rover assembly. Well, jump bot is I'm not Null's choice. While Happy Droid with the tank factory, Bilbo Baggins with the spider factory, and Null King with the rover factory. I don't understand the motivation for spiders, but I'm curious what's going to happen there. I mean, this isn't a very cliffy map, but you could theoretically put spiders up on top of this hill here that I could find some purchase. I mean, you could put crabs on top of here and defend the middle areas. There are options. A little unusual, but there are options. Anyway, first engagement here coming in, and Hydra's having a bit of a hard time. Like, surprisingly a hard time, actually. They're they're finding a bit of damage, but yeah, it's just, unfortunately, you can't really do that much against the Welders, honestly. Like, you just come in with the Scorchers, and then they die. Because Welders are very powerful. Like, on the other hand, Noel King should have a lot more success. Should be able to get rid of this metal extractor. Maybe get rid of the factory. Ooh, they're really lucky. They could actually go run around and get rid of the factory. If they think it through. But I don't they don't know what's around. It's kind of oftentimes how things tend to go, but at the same time, Hydra's commander is just prepped. But hey, Noel King got rid of one of them. And if they're careful and avoid that lotus, they might have a chance, but no, they're not avoiding the lotus. Not even going past. Bit of a shame. That was a dead jump out fact, or at least dead. A couple extra. Well, okay, maybe not. The constable would have stopped that. Would have slowed it down a bit, and then other things would have killed it. So I guess maybe one more metal extractor. Wouldn't have been a bad idea. Would have been better than trying to go for the Lotus, but... Oh, well. Anyway, at this point, the Team Exxon is... Well, they're holding on pretty well. Southwest does have a stronger economy right off the bat, though. I mean, Happy Droid being extremely aggressive with their expansion, but quite frankly, they can afford it. I mean, they've got the welders. They can push forward with that. Those have done a fine job defending thus far. And when they don't have the welders, we're going for them to have the Kodachis. So they've got a lot of options. And Noel King is doing a fine job just making sure the Hydras cannot get in. So at this point, yeah, Southwest at the advantage for economy, even when you take out the Commander. Because the Commander only adds four metal and six energy. Southwest is just expanding really aggressively. Now, Team Exxon, or Exxon is... I'm starting to build up. It's clear that Exxon is more concerned about getting the defenses up than they are about the economy. They'll worry about the economy once they need to worry about the economy. Especially as they are getting the wind generators up. I don't know why they're being focused on... Like, why wind generators? I don't understand. On this map. Like, okay, I get if you're building on top of the plat on top of the hills. That makes sense. But otherwise, I, I don't understand the logic. Because that's... Even then, it's only 0.3. I... It, it doesn't really make sense to me. Generally speaking, when you use wind generators, you're trying to get a better value than the solar plants, which does not happen when it's 0 to 2.5. That's, at best, even on average. Oh, FSC pointing out that the game was a probably custom match and thus didn't have the extra commander. That makes sense, because my understanding with matchmaking, at least, is that the team with two players, or team with fewer players, gets an extra commander. That's always been my understanding. So thanks for the clarification. I should check, actually. Yep, it was a custom match. Good call. Anyway, the point is, though, that either way, Southwest is actually kind of... They're stalling a bit. Exxon has built up their expansions. Like I said before, they got their defenses up first. Not that there's particularly strong defenses. The Yogur would be able to punch through that, or the Half Dozen Scorchers, either way. But it's still something. It's still a small deterrent. And more importantly, Exxon is starting to win the economy game. They need a bit more energy, which, again, I don't understand the logic behind the wind generators, but, hey, they're hitting the average, so I guess that works for now. So at least when that gets built up, there's going to be something. But, yeah, this is what I was talking about. The wind has died down completely. Thankfully, Hydrus is on point with the solar collectors, but there needs to be more of them. 
I mean, hey, this is the worst it gets. So the wind picks up at all, and Exxon suddenly gets a load of energy. That's also why I prefer not to build wind on flat, low ground. Just side note. Anyway, there is that half-dozen Scorcher Assault, and is not working out. The fencers were quite in the way. I mean, at the very least, a few Metal Extractors do go down, and a Constable goes down. That is good value. Now, here comes the Ogre. This is where it's going to become much scarier. At least much scarier for Exxon. Probably going to lose... I don't think it was moderate to lose the Fencer. They might kill the Ogre in the process, but quite frankly, that was worth it. Getting rid of a couple Scorchers on top of that, and with the Blitz to help out, too. Ooh, but the Pyro will be stopping additional Scorchers from Null King doing a proper flank and getting into rep part the rest of the metal extractors. This is still a game. Exxon is still well, they're still they're doing fine. But I mean Southwest actually Southwest still has a reasonably strong force coming in here. The Ripper not distracting the Lotus long enough, but eh, distracted a little bit at least. It's not nothing. So with that opened up, Southwest could theoretically go into the follow-up force, hit these metal extractors, and take most, if not all, of the center. And at this point, Happy Droid is happily reclaiming. Thank you! Thank you for reclaiming. I know it's a meme at this point that I keep going on about reclaim, but it's important. And Happy Droid understands the importance of reclaim and is making sure to actually execute that reclaim. Good job, you! Now at this point, Southwest, though, is still kind of behind, honestly. Exxon has expanded around the edges, and Southwest pretty much hasn't. There's this buffer zone of metal extractors that hadn't been taken by either team. And the center is under some contest, so I mean, Exxon's going to lose a couple metal extractors here and there, but overall, it's fairly even. And Southwest is kind of relying on the reclaim, but again, they are going for it, so good on them. At this point, Southwest does have the center, Exxon does have their commander over the southeast side of the map, or one of the commanders, I'm not Null's commander, that leaves a bit of a secure path if they wanted to go for a flank at all, though with the moderators, I do not see that. Maybe if they, maybe Pyros and such could go for a flank, or... Well, no, I think they're probably they're pretty happy going straight forward. I mean, the moderator fencer mix is going to make this Minotaur just forced to retreat. If it can, I mean, it's the one problem that's slowed down, so retreating is not going to be the easiest thing to do. However, the bigger question is what is Southwest going to do about the rest of the expansions here? Because, okay, they managed to deal some damage, they managed to get a lot of reclaim, and that's good. But what are they going to do about these side expansions? The fact that they provide fire bases, they provide ways for Exxon to get their forces in. The answer is an impaler. Get one of those on there, start ripping apart the expansions to the side, and make sure at least the south side is secure. The north side is, well, they're not going to be getting the north side anytime soon. It's going to require a fair amount of investment, but the south side is pretty well open at this point. Fortunately, it looks like the impaler is having some trouble with radar. Yes, they are having some trouble with radar shadow. Or radar wobble, not shadow. Bit of a shame there. So the Lotus not likely to go down anytime soon. At the same time, there's that Pyro I was talking about earlier. There's that flank I was talking about earlier, in fact. Going Pyro along the south side of the map, because why not? I mean, it's entirely defended by Exxon up until that midpoint, which is now completely open. And then trying to get into Exxon's base at all is not going to be easy. So overall, this is a very effective flank from Exxon. This is a very effective flank from I Am Not Null specifically. And unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot to stop that. I mean, the Blitz, the Blitz and Parity coming in here at least provides a bit of fire support, a bit of defense, but they've already lost three metal extractors. Southwest is already kind of behind. The Reclaim is starting to dry up, or at least the easily grabbed Reclaim is starting to dry up. And Hydrus making sure that that remains the case, though I will admit, Hydra doing a great job making sure that that's not going to last for long. Like, just get rid of the, get rid of the fencers. Kill it all. Moderators come in here. Okay, well, that's a bit harder. Actually, it's way harder because they're hard to hit. But the Impalers are already in, so the force composition is pretty smart for dealing with the Moderators. I mean, they're quite mobile, but... Okay, I guess... It's reasonably smart. Wolverines might work better. Or Tremors. I think Tremors, actually. Or Pillagers. Pillagers at Splash. But, yeah, I would recommend going for Pillagers, honestly. I appreciate the sentiment with the Impalers, and when they work, they work well. They just don't have splash damage, and they're not very accurate. Or Recluses! Hey! Bilbo Baggins was wondering what they're going for with that Spider Factory, and indeed is Recluses another really good option for dealing with this with this rather sparse setup where you need to put artillery onto it. It's a good counter to that, just because they don't hit... They don't hit accurately in any one spot, but they do spread out enough that it's hard to move around to dodge them, and it's hard to make the radar wobble work in your favor. 
Unfortunately, it's also hard to keep a Minotaur alive with them being just pounded on by a bunch of fencers and a bunch of moderators. So, Happy Trade's still in a bit of an awkward position, but hey, to be honest, they've got half the map. Like, Southwest is doing great. Exxon's holding on quite nicely, but Southwest is doing a fine job ripping everything else apart here. They push forward to the recluses, they should be able to get rid of the rest of the metal extractors. Let me just open a path to the fleas. If they get rid of the picket here, the fleas can just rush in, take care of the metal extractors, and that's pretty much golden in the south, on the north side of the map. The south side of the map, I mean, it got pushed back a little bit. The line where stuff is seen as safe by Exxon does open up a few metal extractors to the southwest team. Like, this one for sure. This one needs to be rebuilt. These ones over to the south, I think, are still a little bit... Like, one of them's safe, the other one's in the picket line. I don't really want to cross the picket line. That that would just be... That'd be scab behavior there. Don't want to do that. No one respects that. Breaking it down completely, though. Could be an option. Again, those Faradays. I, I see that a lot, actually. Especially on, like gold to platinum level games, or whatever it is, and I think it's super giant to neutron star. I see those a lot, and I don't see them as much in high level games, but in lower, in mid level games, they come up quite frequently because they're effective. They're a force multiplier. And really useful defensively, too. So, yeah, just I'm really happy to see them more often. It's a pain in the butt when you're actually fighting them because you walk in and you think you're all good, and then suddenly your forces stop moving because they've got EMP'd. But, you know, up until that point, it's pretty cool. When you're just watching it and seeing all these, seeing the Faradays being used, it's not just Lotuses and, well, Lotus, Stardust, and Picket all day, then yeah, that's that's neat. It's surprised the Pill Baggins isn't actually advancing, though. This will be a great time to put the Recluses, like, get the Recluses here, just fight move all the way, oops, fight move all the way across to here, and then, not oh, for crying out fight move all the way across to here, then you'll be good. Unfortunately, Bilbo Baggins is not paying attention to that. And they got the economy set up and the production set up, so at the very least, they're helping that. But, man, they'd be, they'd be able to get rid of the fencers, no problem. And they still are, but the Faraday's gone down first, which opens up the entire north side. Because, again, the Faraday is a very scary turret that is pretty much stopping Exxon in their tracks. Still, though, nice, very nice use of the Ravagers and Scorchers to stop the Pyros. It may not be enough, but at the very least, it also opens up the fencers, so... Bilbo Baggins came in a little bit late, but it worked. And at the same time, the north side is being slowly but surely grabbed. So, southwest team, they're still even, they're still they're not really doing especially well, especially since Exxon does have stronger overdrive, just have generally a more defended area. And they've got firewalkers coming in, so very shortly, this is going to be difficult, if not impossible, to hold for southwest. In fact, it's already kind of getting hard, difficult to hold for southwest because of the firewalkers. Firewalker moderator combo coming in here is... Well, it's retaking control over the center. Exxon very rapidly just taking all the metal extractors, taking the reclaim. That's the, kind of the big difference here is that we saw with the Southwest team, they took the metal in the middle. They grabbed some extractors. Happy Droid did some reclaiming. But there wasn't a whole lot. Just the commander. That was it. And now we're seeing Exxon come in here, and all of a sudden it's just... They got 10 metal per second reclaim immediately while just going through with Masons getting... Yeah, there, there's the convicts. Or the... Ugh, the constables. Constable's coming in here. Exact opposite, really. Constable's coming in here with the reclaim. You got the Masons coming in here, building up defenses and metal extractors and the reclaim. Exxon is entirely on point with this. And, of course, they have more than enough caretakers to deal with this incoming metal. They have got a... What is this, a hundred? Yeah, there's a hundred metal worth of build power in this area right here. So it's super easy to set that, to just build up from here. To use up all the metal, I mean... There's, they're nowhere near. They're 30 metal per second away on reclaim from excessing, or even coming close to raising their metal to the point that it might excess. Southwest, on the other hand, they've got, they've got a reasonable amount of bill power. Bilbo Baggins got loads of bill power, but that's it. The rest of them don't have very much, and that's a bit of a problem, especially given that Bilbo Baggins' forces, they're now coming in with the recluses, but again, other than crabs, there's not a whole lot of heavy forces that would be able to come in they worth that much caretaker. I kind of wish Bilbo Baggins or one of the other two members of the team would start building caretakers around the other factories. You really even up the build power. Because at this point, that tank factory is the main thing. Like, Southwest has enough... They have enough, they can start building Cyclopses or, or Minotaurs, but possibly Cyclopses, either way. And build a bunch of them and really push through. And we're seeing a bit of that, and the Tremor as well coming in to try to help out. That's good. But the problem is that there's only 20 metal per second going into that factory, so it's not that efficient. But at the same time, there's 
How, how much metal? 10? Okay. 100 metal on caretakers alone. That's always kind of annoying. It's like, if you don't have the metal, don't go for the caretakers. I mean, I get, yeah, Exxon, they've got the power and the metal, and they might reclaim enough. That makes sense, but it's, no, this is inefficient. Half of these should be on the other factories. For sure. Like, four on each factory would be perfect. They can just rapidly build anything you need. I mean, at this point, it's not like it's working out terribly for Southwest. They're able to keep their armies alive, and their attrition has been 5,000 metal better than their opponents. So, efficient, if nothing else. But at the same time, Exxon just reclaimed most of the metal in the center of the map. Pretty much everything that's left is going to be wrecked up by the Tremor. So, the only real weakness here right now is that Southwest doesn't have as much they built with this. But even though, I think the armor value is actually about even. Firewalkers, however, are going to be able to put a stop to the Fleas, for sure. The Rexes, maybe. Recluses are a bit of a difficult thing, but again, they are still short of range, so, you know, perhaps 70 versus 900. <clears throat> but again, there's the Tremor coming in there. It might actually kill some of the Recluses. I'm not sure. Ooh, very close. Dangerously close. Not enough. But as it is, Exxon's still behind in terms of static metal. Southwest needs a lot more production near the factories that are actually building all these caretakers that are out of range of the factory that actually does stuff. Like, the only reason Southwest is accessing right now is because Bilbo Baggins is not building anything, and they have all the caretakers. That's it. That is entirely it, and that's a bit of a shame, because Exxon might win this because of that one choice. Because otherwise, there's actually pretty good use of units here. I mean, I like the composition. I like the, you know, the use of the tanks up front, allowing the impalers to get close, allowing the terminals to get close. That's well done. There just aren't enough of them. Okay, why are you building storages? I feel like this is the thing someone was talking about in chat about the sort of habits that is really annoying for players to do, like building 10 caretakers and then building nothing or building a bunch of storages. It's like, no, build caretakers near the other factories. I mean, it's clear that there's some... No, that's the rally point from the spider factory. Is going to help out this other factory. It's like, build workers, engineer something? Like, uh, I... I don't know. This has got to be so aggravating for the Southwest team. Just Bilbo Baggins has all this... All of this money. All of this... All these caretakers could be building loads and loads of weavers at the very least. And is letting it just sit. Like, the only reason they aren't accessing is because they have eight storages, and they have, like, 4,000 metal storage available. That's still going to access really quickly. And that's not units. It could be so many units, but no, it's none. Nothing at all. All these units here that are being built, basically all there is, 20, 30 metal per second? No, no, 40 metal per second being used. Could be way more. Oh, good, more caretakers here. I mean, granted, there's also nothing being built by Happy Droid right now, but there's the caretakers to build it, and I don't know why they aren't being built, because there's no reason not to. Like, seriously, there's zero reason not to build this up here. I should kind of point out here... No, these are... This one's close enough to help both, I think. But... No, I can't even tell. Just barely, I think I'm not entirely sure. So I was about to say that the other team did have their factories a little bit closer for the caretakers to actually work. But no, the caretakers are pretty separate, too. But at least they're evenly spread. However, that being said, Happy Droid is starting to build up some forces, so Southwest shouldn't access too... No, this build pretty quickly. Noel King's on it, though. They got the caretakers. I don't know why Bill Baggins isn't building stuff. Like, seriously, two dozen recluses would not go amiss right now, actually. Or two dozen hermits. Or three or four crabs. All of those things would be really good options right now, and it would do great service to the team. Just build any one of them, really. It doesn't matter which. It's money that you have and your opponents kind of don't. Just go for it. Like, seriously, that, that's only 3,000 metal right there. Or expect... Uh, I don't know what Bill Baggins is doing. There's no nukes coming. It's 20 minutes into a 2v3. Nukes might happen, but it's not happening now. There, it's not been a long enough stalemate. It hasn't been a 20-minute stalemate in a 2v3. Or 3v3. It's been two minutes of stuff. And there's been lots of motion. There's lots of action. It's not like... It's not like the teams cannot push through. Although, to be fair, good, good job the Dominatrix is here. I like it. Actually, I find it terribly annoying when I'm fighting against it, but as an idea, 
Aegis, Aegis supported dominatrices, or Aspis rather, supported dominatrices are not a bad idea. Get the Weavers, start building some metal here. Anything tries to come at them. It's a swarm of dominatrices protected by shields, so you're not going to have an easy time killing them first. Hmm, good call. I mean, counter to that would be boatloads of fleas. Bilbo Baggins. Build, building a ton of fleas would pretty quickly eliminate that. Or anything, since the Recklesses are all dead now. But at the very least, the Tremors managed to open up the southeast side of the map. And Bilbo Baggins... Oh, they left. Okay, hey, Happy Droid gets the units. They're presumably going to start building stuff. That's not shields. Oh, huh, okay. Well, I mean, Bilbo Baggins didn't seem that invested in the game as it was. And at this point, it is probably going to be Exxon's game. I mean, Southwest... They do have these Minotaurs coming in here that are going to be able to deal a fair amount of damage. Might be able to rip apart a commander or two. Maybe get rid of the caretakers. I think the best option is to get rid of the caretakers. Like, if those go, then that's a huge amount of production. That's Exxon accessing for the next couple minutes. Although I don't see that happening. I don't see the micro happening for that. And I'm not Null's Commander of the Lightning Gun, making sure that won't happen by stopping the Minotaurs from literally doing anything. So at this point, the Minotaurs are kind of done. Yeah, they've been captured. That's kind of it. I really don't understand the use of these Aegis... Or these... Yeah, the Aegis is here. Or I guess is Aegis... I don't know what I've been asked. They're kind of pointless. I really don't get that. But it looks like this is going to be Southwest team resigning, and I can't say I blame them. They definitely had a reasonably good shot mid-match. But unfortunately, all the characters being used for literally nothing meant that there wasn't enough build power for the rest of the team. The rest of the team didn't build caretakers either. And that's kind of the problem. Ultimately, it meant that the, the center being destroyed did not provide as much mileage to Southwest, or not as much value to Southwest as it could have otherwise. They didn't take advantage of that as well as they could have, and as a result, they ended up just dying. I mean, in terms of metal use and production, is dead even. In terms of army value, Southwest was way ahead for mo the vast majority of the game. Southwest was way ahead. And the early Minotaurs, they had the early Ogres, like they had loads of options they could use to push in. And they took advantage of that too, and it's consistent. Like, they got into battles, and they stayed more valuable. But the problem partially is also that there was a bunch of Recklesses doing nothing over the north side of the map. And once they got a massive economy boost, well, that became nearly excess. It became a lot of storage. It's not clear here. It's clearer here in that metal produced metal used. Like, Southwest produced... It. Wait, how did... Never mind. Southwest used more metal than they produced somehow. Interesting. Must be a bug. I did not know that was a thing that could happen. But anyway, yeah, it was only near the end of the game that their army value started to drop. It was just a matter of most of their army, or some of their army not being used, and the rest of their army... I mean, running into moderators, that was the real problem. And not finding much security in the center of the map and really holding it and then building from there, and then finding paths they could use to break it. Because they could have break, broken the south side of the map five minutes before they did. That would have been way more valuable. Ten minutes before they did, really. That would have been loads more valuable. Because it would have opened it up, it would have allowed for a path right into the main base. It would have made sure there was no easy flank opportunity that destroyed some of the metal extractors with pyros. And might have killed a commander, too. Which would have been especially valuable. Just for the economy and production storage problems. And then, of course, opening things, up, opening things up on the side with all the caretakers is another valuable thing, which did not happen. So, yeah, bit of a shame there. But they were ahead for most of the game. It's just a matter of the use. Then again, that's kind of the thing about having 2v3 with the skill difference, is that's kind of why it was a reasonably even game, 2v3. And the 2-1. Anyway, the next match is going to be a 1v1 with I'm Not Null versus Archangel on Wanderlust, and I have a feeling this is going to involve a fair few Cyclopses. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. It might not. I just would not be surprised, because it's, well, it's Wanderlust, and apparently that's a thing now. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Be up in a couple minutes.